Transcendence, this movie, um, it's got some very interesting scenes that uh, have kind of parallel a lot of things that we've went through, um, of like a little community in the desert. Um, uh, amazingly, when we see these movies, we're like blown away by the depth and the presence, and then we go, hmm, because uh, we were just guided out here to the desert, and um, it's all felt very purposeful and helpful, and, but you know, being guided out to the desert, when we were watching Transcendence, I guess you had the same experience with me, like, oh yeah. my gosh, this is like what we're going through. Yeah, I, uh, <clears throat> I was like, I, I was like, are you kidding me? <laughs> like, really, because it was like that movie when we watched it. For the first time, it was so spirit given. It was just like you're watching it, and it's like we were set up for this deep, deep experience. And it was Easter Eve, just like a Saturday night before Easter. And I knew whatever movie we were gonna watch, it was gonna set us up for the Easter talk, right? The next day. And it was just mind blowing talking about resurrection of the mind, really. And I, I was like watching it, I was like, you're kidding me. You're just like, you're kidding me. It's just so obvious. It's like Spirit was talking. And uh, it was, I was like, this is exactly what we do. This is exactly what we do. But from there on, like, because oh, we were on tour and some people were asking, so what happens in the community? What do you guys do? How is it? And I would tell them, watch Transcendence. That's exactly what happens. Right, and it's just like this deep, like deep devotion. It's like all the like. It's just like everyone who comes here, like they're all. Everyone is called out of the world. It's like there's a call to leave the world and just really immerse in the purpose, immerse, immerse in the new, like in this depth, in the state of mind. And in the movie, they call it being uploaded into the system, but which is like. Uh, a state of mind, which is Christ's mind, and it's this like really state of mind that is absolutely defenseless, and the only purpose is just like being in purpose, just being in Christ, and uh, yeah, and all the events are taught and take place are taking place in the desert, and just like, and we're here in the like in the desert in the middle of nowhere. And uh, and everything that is given, like all the funds, it's all used for the awakening, just like within this context, within this community. And uh, so yeah, that was very, very interesting to see and how, and then there's a lot of emphasis on trust. Like, at a, like just trust, like and the Course is saying, like trust will settle every problem now. And I would even say, trust will settle every doubt now. And so, the only thing that is ever on the way is just like a, a lack of trust. And how, like during the movie, I saw how the trust has to be complete. Even if it's 99.9%, .9%, it has to be 100% trust. And this is where, otherwise that 1% will make a lot of turbulence. So it's like, like it, it, it just became so simple and obvious every time there's like, turbulence in the like in the in the mind it's because there's a, a call into trust it's just really like choose to trust now and so yeah yeah and, and you know seeing this movie it was I know it, the whole world kind of seems real surreal to me but this was really surreal because we were up there to do this Easter program the next day. We were in this hotel, or this motel, <coughs> and we all said, okay, let's go. We're going to see Transcendence. And we were in the hotel room, and the power went out. And so we couldn't take the elevator. We were going to the movie. We couldn't take the elevator. We had to literally take the stairs, go down to get into our car. We drove to the movie theater. It's the first time I've ever driven to a movie theater, which was quite nearby. Instead of people going in the entrance, everyone was coming out. The entire theater was emptying out. Because they had no power. 
So we're like, hmm, this is going to be fun. It's just this glee, like, oh, wow, we're on an adventure to see Transcendence, and the people are coming out of the movie theater. Everyone's coming out of the movie theater, heading for their cars, and we're just sitting there kind of praying, watching all these people come out. And then, Kirsten got on her iPhone, and she looked, and she looked, found a theater that was some miles away, and so you can just click on the, the button and, to call the number. Just you could see it, it came very quick, she hit it to call, and then a guy answered at the theater, and Kirsten didn't say anything except, do you have power? Imagine answering a phone, and that's all you hear on the phone is, do you have power? And he goes, uh, yeah. <laughs> and so they had this kind of funny exchange that started off with, do you have power? Not hello, or just, do you have power? So we hit the other button, it gives you the route, we went right there. We go to this big theater, we could tell we were getting upgraded from a standard <laughs> theater to an IMAX theater. Like, oh no, you're not going to see Transcendence on a regular screen. The Spirit was like, oh no, 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 you're going to see Transcendence on the big screen. But we, first we walked in, there were all these ticket takers, you know, this big place, multiplex and IMAX, and we were like, whoa, whoa, whoa. We go in there, out of all these rows, we get in a row, we go up to the front, and we get up to the front, and the guy who's going to sell us our ticket was the very guy of all of them, that got the, do you have power call, and we heard ki the Kiwi accent of Kirsten, he goes, it's you, <laughs> the do you have power girl. And so we were laughing, then we went in there, so we get in there, and we get to the beginning of the movie, we're all like watching all the previews, and it's, it's not only IMAX, it's surround sound, so, you know, when the previews are going on, our throats, our collarbones are shaking, and we're all like, you know, it's like, Oh, it's big, and it's blasting us with Dolby sound, and I mean, surround sound, it was like, whoa, we just got upgraded to the penthouse, you know, it was like, whoa. And then we got the movie started. We were in Massachusetts, and we were looking around at different places, we were a little north of Boston. The line comes on in the movie, Boston has power, and we were all like, Boston, we were all like, Boston has power. It was because we were just north of Boston in Massachusetts, and it was like right in the movie, and we were just like, okay, this is really feeling surreal. But it's almost like we were taken to the movies. We were in the hands, like little putty in the hands of the spirit, for a really spectacular, magnificent experience. And the thing about it is, I think if you had to have one thought, the trust and the faith, because it's a relationship between a husband and wife, who are very much in love, and who um, the wife really wants to, you know, make the world a better place. She wants to see the healing of Mother Earth, um, and her husband is like this brilliant scientific mind, and they have this great love, um, this loving relationship, and and then as the movie goes on with the, with Johnny Depp and the transcendence. You can start to see everything that even seems to happen is really a reflection of mind. Of, of transcendent mind and also of a mind that's opening, that still has fears and doubts, still wants to make the world a better place. You know, still is opening, evolving, growing, and yet everything is a reflection of that mind. It's almost like the Spirit lovingly answers everything. Mm -hmm.